Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 59 verse 19 that whenever the enemy comes against us like a flood, that the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. And so, Father, we thank you for today. Lord, as the enemy comes against your people, I ask that the Spirit of the Lord will raise a mighty standard against the powers of darkness. In the name of Jesus, amen. Being a disciple of Jesus is actually very, very desirable. You know, everybody who is a Christian would want to say, oh, I'm a disciple of Jesus. You know, if you come into a classroom or a church or whatever, I'm saying to Christians, if you're a disciple of Jesus, raise your hands. Well, most Christians would definitely raise their hands because, you know, it's a nice role to say, oh, I am a disciple of Jesus. But the truth is that being a disciple of Jesus is far beyond salvation. It is not something that is just easy. It is not a walk in the park. It is something that you have to deliberately engage in. In the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus gave us the indices of discipleship. How you know you're a disciple. If you've listened to our devotional, we've said, you know, the different things that Jesus said will be the mark of a disciple. The number one thing he said, you have to desire it. You have to come to that point when you say, okay, I want to be a disciple, not just be saved. I want something deeper. Number two, he said, you must deny yourself. Today, let's take a look at the third indices of discipleship and Jesus in that Luke 9 23 says it is to take up your cross daily I'm reading from the NIV version it says then he said to them whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily so this third requirement of taking up your cross daily that is the requirement that separates the boys from the men it is that requirement that separates those who really want God and those who are just saying they want God. You know, because all of our lives, we've been taught that if you follow Jesus, prosperity will follow a big car, will follow a big house, will follow new job. You know, everything will just be wonderful and there'll be no more problems and all. And so when Christians hear about the cross, it might come as a shock to many people. So there's a cross involved in this thing. The answer is yes, there is a cross involved if you are going to be a disciple of Jesus. Question is, what does it mean to take up the cross? Well, the cross is the most painful and the most humiliating form of execution during the Roman era. And so taking up your cross really means to daily expect painful situations that will arise because of your allegiance to Christ not because you did something wrong if you are suffering for what you've done wrong then that's fine but that's not taking up your cross but it is because of your allegiance to Christ many painful situations will arise and God will expect you to put his kingdom first because the subject matter of the cross is not taught to a lot of Christians, they are surprised when they suffer for following Jesus. And so whenever that time comes, they back off and say, oh, this is not the plan. But the truth is that it is a plan. Actually, we instinctively recall from a cross-bearing life because our minds are reluctant to believe that this can be God's will for us. But the words of Christ, you can't deny it. He said in that scripture we just read in Luke 9, 23, he said, if anyone desires to come after me, means that nobody is excused. Nobody is exempted. If you want to come after Jesus, if you want to follow him, then you must take up the cross. It means that you are going to take up unpleasant situations because of your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Now, there is a man that came to Jesus because he wanted more. He knew that, yes, I do have have some kind of you know religious thing going on but i sense that there is more just like you might be in your heart sensing there is more i want more of god i want to go deeper with the lord so you're just like that rich young ruler the bible talked about in mark chapter 10 the story is from verse 17 to 24 so this man comes to jesus and says good master what shall i do that i might inherit eternal life and jesus taught him and said to him you know what what you need to do is you have to obey the commandments do not commit adultery do not kill do not steal do not bear false witness, do not defraud someone and you know, honor your father and mother and then the man answered and said unto him, Master I've observed this all my youth so you see, this particular man had been religious, he had obeyed God let's say he was saved, so basically he goes to church, he doesn't lie, he doesn't steal and 
all that but he still knew there's something more and so he tells jesus i've observed this from my youth in other words i've been born again for my youth remember there was no born again at that time i'm only trying to explain to you you know what that man's situation at that time would have looked at for us today so in verse 21 the bible tells us then jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him one thing thou lackest go thy way sell whatever you have give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me can you imagine this is such a revolutionary idea no religious leader has ever talked like this no pharisee no one had ever spoken like this none of the sadducees none of the prophets of old imagine someone coming to jesus and saying i want more and then the answer jesus tells him you know what go sell all your possession i thought if jesus says go sell all your possessions then it means you're going to have one big miracle coming down but guess what jesus said he said when you sell all your possession you are going to have treasure in heaven he didn't talk about the earth he said you are going to have treasure in heaven and as if that's not enough he now said that you now come and take up your cross and follow me what kind of dynamics is this what kind of mathematics is this how do i give up everything and in the reward is that i'm going to take up my cross is that i'm going to take up suffering is that i'm going to lose how do you give up everything and at the same time jesus is telling you you are going to lose that's quote and unquote lose meaning you're going to take up your cross because the cross does not sound like something that is pleasant it is about you denying so many things that about taking up unpleasant situations because of your allegiance to christ no one that they said concerning jesus nobody ever spoke like this man now this is a very unpopular message it is something people don't want to hear people want to hear the opposite they want to hear oh don't worry you know if you want to be a disciple just try to be good try not to tell lies try not to steal try not to commit fornication come to church be in the department and you're fine but that's not what jesus said jesus said you would take up your cross if you are really serious you are going to determine that i'm going to lose a lot of material things i'm going to lose a lot of social contacts i'm going to lose a lot of things that are valuable to this world but do not have any relevance in eternity but you know what a man that takes up his cross to follow jesus the rewards are beyond what money can buy in this life and in the life to come look at peter an illiterate fisherman who grew up in galilee almost 3,000 years ago. Till today, we are still talking about him. These men changed the course of the history of their whole destiny. You know, they didn't go to school. They were illiterate men. But today, universities are being built after Peter. Courses are being studied after Peter. PhD holders are studying Peter. Streets, cathedrals are named after this man. Let's not even discuss the benefit he has in heaven. The Bible talks about the foundation of heaven was laid with the names of these men. These are men who took up the cross because of their commitment to Jesus Christ. And the, Peter and the rest of them are not the only ones that will be blessed by taking up the cross. Anybody who truly follows Jesus and takes up his cross, obviously Jesus is going to bless in this time and in the time to come. But these are the costs of discipleship. Discipleship is a very expensive venture. That is why there are not too many disciples of Jesus today because when people sit down and count the cost, they say, I would rather just stay as a normal person who is saved. But like I said, what God will show and release to a disciple, the blessing that God will release to a disciple, the kind of favor, the kind of intimacy a disciple has, can never be given to somebody who just basically comes to church and is saved. They are on two different paths. So if you want to be a disciple, you have not lost anything. You have actually gained so much. Tomorrow we're going to continue our conversation on the third requirement of discipleship, which is taking up the cross. Thank you. God bless you. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik's Alfred.